Hey guys, this is Vishal and welcome to my tutorial on object oriented programming. So today I'll be talking about the basics of object oriented programming and then at the end I'll show you a few very good cool things that we can do with object oriented programming. So the first question, why object oriented programming over the functions? So let me give you a very good scenario. If we have to store the data of few college students, then by the function way, for example, say we had to store the uh, name and the age of a student. So basically for Bella, we would write Bella underscore name equal to Bella and Bella underscore gender equal to female. And similarly for Ben, we would write Ben underscore name equal to Ben and Ben underscore gender equal to male. So as you can see, as the number of students increases, so do the number of variables. And this is a pretty inconvenient way. So what's the alternative solution? Well, the alternative is basically writing a class student and where each student automatically gets the characteristics of name and gender. So whenever you define an object of the type student, it automatically gets the name and, and the gender that you define it with. You can easily see that it is very convenient to declare an object in this manner rather than the function way. And the best part of it is that we can add functions to the class. So when we start our class, we first have to declare a constructor. A constructor is basically written as this. It is written as underscore underscore init underscore underscore and then a series of parameters is passed. Notice that your self is the most important parameter and the other parameters are the ones that we need to and we that we need our object to have. So in this case uh, we have self dot name is name and self dot gender is gender. So this is how your constructor gets defined. So whenever you an object is created it automatically gets these values. The print method is basically to print the attributes of your object. So you can define the print method in any way. Be sure to return the uh, string that you are creating in the print method. And then finally we can add various methods to the class that can manipulate on the object and do various things. So I have written a small code sculpture code that I would like to share with you all which, uh, which deals with dynamically creating objects. As, as you must have noticed, we were actually creating objects and then running the program. Well, here we are dynamically going to create objects. So let's see the code. So this is a class that I have written. Basically, it takes in the name and the gender of the student and it adds this to the class students. And then it just portrays it on the canvas. So let me just show you how this works. Say I type in Michelle and I type in May as student. So oh my god, I get this image. So now let me type Joe and I add Joe. Okay, so Joe gets added. Then uh, I type Julie. I type Julie and Julie is female. So I add the student and here we have Julie. So so to write this code, I have basically define the class student and I and as I already explained I have the, I have the methods I knit and stir and then I have the draw method that will basically go and draw the images I have set of 10 images 5 for girls and 5 for boys and so it will randomly choose the image and draw it on the canvas then I have this button handler the button handler which will basically add the student so let me show you what happens in the button handler. Well in the button handler, it basically gets the text that is written in the input boxes from the get underscore text method and then it basically defines a new object called student name of the gender. And then I have a global array called students which uh, I am just going to append every object to this to this list and then for, for every student that I had, I'm just going to go and print out or just check whether the gender is male or gender is female and I give it a random image. Now in the draw function, I am basically going and drawing every object that is there in student. So 
I am basically having an index and the i i uh, dummy variable to isolate over the loop. And let me go and show you the draw method in the uh, class student. Well, in the draw method, I am basically checking if gender is male or gender is female, and according to that, I am going and drawing it on the canvas. So this is how you can go and write a very simple function that dynamically adds objects and you can go and experiment with it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.